All right. Now we're going to work on some hitches. And I guess we'll start with the with the clove hitch. Easily tied in the middle of the line. And this might be done to, to send up a tool into the tree. You can make two counterclockwise round turns. Put the second one behind the first one and you have a clove hitch. The uh, signature of the clove hitch is that the, the two ends of rope proceed opposite directions out of the, the hitch. And then within this circle you can put an object. That might be a carabiner. And then you've got a tightened up clove hitch. It might be a saw handle. You know, when you make those round turns, you can make them fairly big. You can make them bigger. Put the second one behind the first one. And you've got a pretty big handle. You can put, you know, a saw handle in there. Tighten it up. And you can lift up, you know, a handsaw or something like that up into the tree. So that's how we tie it in the midline. Two counterclockwise clove hitches, put the second one behind the first one, you have a clove hitch. To tie it on a tree or on a branch that you're rigging, you go around, you come under the original uh, rope, and then go around a second time in the same direction. And there's your clove hitch. Now to make this secure, you essentially tie a second clove hitch. Two half hitches. One, two. So you've got a clove hitch covered by a clove hitch. That's actually, you know, a second clove hitch right on top of there. And that makes it very secure. And what makes this a hitch versus a knot is is the degree of bends in this in this rope. The main load line, if you follow it here, has a very slight bend. And what makes a like the bowling knot has a very sharp turn. And it, and it's at these turns like this that if there's load put on this this rope when it turns tightly like this, it, it it'll break right there. On this hitch, the main load is on a very shallow bend. And that's what causes this to retain most of its strength. You know, in the, in the crane rigging ANSI standards, you're not supposed to use a knot when you're lifting something with a crane. But you can use a hitch. And the reason is that the hitch is a stronger, it, you, it doesn't rob the rope of its strength. And so this would be a secure hitch to use on a crane uh, rig, a timber hitch, or uh, excuse me, a clove hitch. Now the second hitch might be a cow hitch. This is a very popular knot in the tree care industry. And instead of the, the clove hitch goes right around a second time in the same direction, the cow hitch is just going to switch directions, 180 degrees. We're going to make a, a tight bend right there. And it's going to come back around and then through that bend and follow the original rope. So they both come through there. This is just a choker hitch. It's like both ends. If, if this were a short rope, which this one is, you could just make a bite on a rope and put it around there and pass it through, pass both ends through and pull it up tight. It's a choker hitch. I've seen guys tie this knot and they come around and then they tie a half hitch here on the outside of this without going through. I mean, yeah, that's a type of hitch, but it's not nearly as secure as an actual cow hitch that comes through that yoke. Very important to get that solid choke so it's choking the whole line. 
and then you tie, I tie two half inches. I know the, the textbook will say you only have to tie one. Uh, you know, if this is loaded and unloaded throughout the day, so if you had a, an application in our world that would do that would be having a pulley on this, on this sling, on a sling that's tied in this fashion. And so that pulley gets loaded and unloaded, loaded and unloaded, and this knot will creep. And this pulley will be, you know, <laughs> quite a bit lower at the end of the day. So that knot actually creeped. Now you can tuck the tail. You can pull a little slack here and, and tuck the tail so that when it gets choked, it's going to pinch that tail in there and it can't come out. That, that would be another way to do it. A single half inch and tuck the tail. I just often tie two half inches because the clove hitch has to have two half inches. You know, and when, you know, I've taught enough guys over the years that I know the instruction tie two clove hitches on a, or, or two half hitches on a clove hitch and one half hitch on a cow hitch doesn't register. I, I mean, I've seen it. And, and so you, you can think you told somebody that, but they'll think, I think on the cow hitch you tie two and on the clove hitch you tie one. Now, I, I, I don't like that. You just tie two. It, you know what? It's, you worried about the time it's taken? <laughs> you know, it doesn't take that much time. Just tie two. Uh, overkill is good. Tie two and tuck the tail for all I care. But, you know, don't tie a hitch that doesn't, doesn't work. That's for sure. So that's a cow hitch. It goes around, comes under, changes direction, comes back through. Both lines are coming out the same direction. Tie a couple of half hitches for good measure. Now, a, a simpler hitch would be a timber hitch. Let's say you don't have enough rope to go twice around the tree. Uh, and so then you just take wraps. After, after changing direction, just like the cow hitch, you just take four to five wraps around that piece so that when it chokes, it's pinching all of those pieces. And that's actually a very secure hitch. If you've got four to five wraps around there, uh, especially if you've got a fairly you know, uniform log that you're putting it on, and every one of those wraps is getting pinched, very secure knot. And so that's a, that's a timber hitch. Now going back to the clove hitch, there's a little variation that you can tie. that is a, called a bunt line hitch. So we just tied a clove hitch on the opposing side of the line. We went around, you know, a tree branch or a, a trunk, and then you can set this, you can pull this up and, and set this. And you can tuck this tail if you want to, just to make it more secure. But that's a clove hitch that's there's a sliding clove hitch, which is called a bunt line hitch. And that's a pretty secure hitch. Again, a very slight angle on the load line. And if you tuck the tail here, it's completely secure. It's a very good, very good hitch for tying something up quick. And you know, it's adjustable. You can pull it back out. So that's a bunt line hitch. Now you can also use a bunt line hitch to attach to a carabiner. You know, if you had a carabiner and you want to tie a clove hitch, two half hitches in the same direction causes the ropes to come out the opposite direction. And then you slide that right up to your carabiner. And that could be a good way to anchor something to a line or to a carabiner. It's pretty secure. You know, you could, that could be life support if you wanted it to be. But a better one for that, while well, we got the carabiner out, 
this up here is an anchor hitch. Let's get a carabiner you might use on your saddle. And an anchor hitch is again two wraps around the carabiner. But these are just two, two wraps, two circles. Just go twice around. And then it's going to come behind the standing part of the line and through those two circles. This is an anchor hitch. And by the textbook, they say tie a half hitch above that just to make it secure. Now, that works, but this half hitch can loosen up pretty easily and, and come off. Uh, and it's kind of up, makes it not taller, and it's kind of out here in the way. You know, it's a few inches away from your carabiner. I climbed on a on an anchor hitch for several years. I cut my splice off one time and I just thought, started tying an anchor hitch and I never spliced a rope again for my climbing line. Uh, I just use this anchor hitch. It, it ties and unties. You, know, you can run on it all day and then untie it. But what I did, instead of tying that half hitch that was up in my way, I just went around a second time an anchor hitch with two turns. Pull this through, dress it up. It's a very neat looking knot. When it cinches down, I mean, it's never gonna pull two wraps out of there. If an anchor hitch is secure with a half hitch, an anchor hitch with two turns is super secure. And then your, your tail's down here by your carabiner, it's not really in the way. And this becomes so secure, once you have this all the way set, you know, by loading it with your body weight, uh, this this is not going to creep. You could cut this off short. And if you don't believe me, I've got a spare piece around here somewhere. This was an old lanyard. You can see I started nicking it up with my saw. Got a little nick there. Another one here, a good one here. You know, you start looking at this stuff every day, and you say, you know what? I think I need to retire this thing. So, I mean, I had little nicks on this everywhere. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get rid of this lanyard. But here's the knot. Here's my, my double wrap anchor hitch. It was so frozen in place, it just, you'd have to really work to untie this. And so I can still put this carabiner through there. So like I said, when I climb on this, on my main line, I could untie this at the end of the day, it'd be no problem and this didn't really creep. You know, when I was tying it and untying it, I left the tail more like this. But when I tied it and really set it, like I'm not gonna untie this again until I retire this line. This is a fairly short tail and it does not creep. And you know, once it gets really set and you know, this got wet and dried and everything. I mean, that knot is not moving. So an anchor hitch with two wraps on the anchor is really an effective uh, tie-off hitch. So let's look at that again. So it's just two, two, two rolls. So we come through there. We're going to make two rolls around the carabiner. Kind of keep them loose because you're going to come around and pass through. And then keep it loose and pass through a second time. Dress it up and cinch it up if you want your tail a little shorter. You know, just milk it out here and get it all dressed up. Anchor hitch right on your carabiner. It's a good little hitch. You can also put it on your anchor. <laughs> boat if you want to. All right, let's see here. Let's try uh, the uh, the clove hitch and the <coughs> and the cow hitch. Some practical applications to these. You know, we rig on a cow hitch all the time. 
We make the cow hitch, and it will it will hold on 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 the log. Now, if you're in California and you're working on a eucalyptus tree, or my friends in Guatemala, if you know you're working on a eucalyptus tree, you're going to have to tie, cut some notches uh, above and below this so that this doesn't slide off. Eucalyptus is a very smooth, you know, kind of flaky bark that. I mean, the rope, the hitch will just slide right off of there if, if you've got a, if you don't have some branch or something holding it on. You wouldn't want to tie this directly on a, a smooth bowl with, without any branches on it. it. It may slide right off. And there, I heard a story one time that uh, somebody was visiting California and was rigging for somebody. And they said, oh, you better cut some notches on that. No, I've got it tied real well. Yeah, when you're in a different part of the country and somebody's giving you advice, <laughs> you better you better take the advice. Uh, they put a hole in the uh, blacktop. Yeah, that was real funny. But anyways, <clears throat> pride comes before destruction, right? Uh, let's see. Finally, this is a a hitch that I've been using for a little while here. It's a mooring hitch. And you make a reverse round turn. So ordinarily we're making round turns and uh, counterclockwise circle. This would be a clockwise circle. And it passes underneath the standing part of the line. And then the loop that you created with that round turn lays over the top of the opposing side of the line. This is going to be a sliding hitch. And then you're going to pull that opposing side through and put a twist in that line. And you've got a small bite here. You're going to go up tight and, and form a second bite. And you're going to put this bite through this twist. Pull through a little bit of tail, but keep this tail sticking out here. And now we're going to just tighten this up, dress it, and cinch it right to the, the log that we're going to hitch. And that is a very secure hitch. Again, again, the load line is a very slight bend. So we have most of the strength of our rope. All, of, all the turns are in the, the hitch. And the load is on a very slight bend. So that's good. And once this is loaded, if you cut this free and it, you got a pulley up here and it, it drops off, once this is loaded, this loop is not going to get pulled out. I mean, that, that's going to be loaded tight. But when it hits the ground, the ground guy is going to be able to pull that right out. I mean, they're going to love that, you know? We always talk about lazy prima donna climbers. But, you know, the groundies like to, to have some luxury once in a while, too. So let's look at this again. A reverse round turn. Lay it across the opposing side of the line. Make a twist. Pull up a bite. Pull it through. hitches. It's a nice secure hitch. It comes out with a simple pull. That pulls out easier than the flying bowline. If you remember, I showed you that flying bowline. I'll tie that quick. I'm not going to... You can go back and watch the, uh, the bowline part of the, one of our videos. So that's a flying bowline. Take that twist out, hitch it up. Same principle. If you hitch it right, it, it's got a slight bend. But when you pull this one, that round turn kind of holds. So then you got to pull the other side of the rope to pull it up. So that's pretty slick too. But this mooring hitch, and here's me tying it fast. I mean, that's a nice little hitch. Ties up quick, comes apart good on the ground. Again, reverse round turn, you can grab that right away, make a twist, come up tight, put a bite through, cinch it up. It dresses really nice, cinches really nice, comes apart really nice. Now a little fun thing with this mooring hitch, if you're going camping, maybe you're climbing trees in the woods, 
and you're going to set up your tent, or maybe you're staking a tree and you, you need a friction knot. You make this mooring hitch, except you twist this three times. One more time. Put a bite through there. And we're going to dress this up. If you look at it, this, this is a six coil prusik with a bite through there. So if you pull this out, I mean obviously there's a lot of friction here. It's hard for me to pull out. So when this is pulling on this, that friction hitch holds. It doesn't slide up there. So you can, you know, shorten this up and, and tension up your tent or whatever you are. And then when you're going to break down, it pulls apart nicely, like the mooring hitch. So that's pretty cool. So the mooring hitch. One twist and a bite. If you want to make a friction hitch, you just make three twists on that original loop. Very good knot. I like that one. I'm going to be using that more often. So I hope you like the hitching video and uh, please like it and Subscribe to our channel. We'll have some more content coming your way. Thanks a lot.